Welcome to the Six Sigma Overview Module. In this module, we will explain what Six Sigma means, cover the Sigma levels, go over a quick history of Six Sigma, and provide Six Sigma is a set of techniques and tools for process improvement. It is characterized by the following key points. One, it follows a structured project methodology called DMAIC, which stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. Two, Projects are defined by leadership that tie directly to the company financials. Three, there is a structured training hierarchy which matches the martial arts belt levels. The most common belt levels are white, yellow, orange, green, black, and master black belt. Four, there is a heavy emphasis on data and statistical analysis to ensure the problem was solved correctly. And five, there is an overall focus on tools that reduce variation, prevent problems, and avoid risk. The term Six Sigma has a statistical meaning. If you assume that your business process operates like a normal distribution or bell-shaped curve, then there are certain assumptions that can be made. The process performs within about three standard deviations from the process average. If we define the quality of the process using upper and lower specification limits, then a Six Sigma process is one where the nearest specification limit is at least six standard deviations away from the average. The number of standard deviations from the average and the nearest limit is also called the sigma level. Sigma levels equate to a yield percentage or success rate. A six sigma process only has 3.4 defects for every 1 million times that you run the process. That is nearly perfect. On the other hand, a one sigma process only has a 31% yield. A three sigma process has a success rate or yield of 93%, so it will fail 7% of the time on average. The higher the sigma level, the less chance of a failure in the process, which reduces waste, inefficiency, and ultimately rework cost in the process, which directly impacts the financial performance of a company. The goal of Six Sigma is to calculate the sigma level for your key processes and strive to increase the sigma level in order to improve the financial performance of the company. Six Sigma was introduced by engineer Bill Smith while working at Motorola in 1986. It was later popularized by Jack Welch, CEO at General Electric in the early 1990s. He made it a requirement that his leadership achieve a Green Belt certification before they could be promoted. Both Lean and Six Sigma became popularized around the same time. Nowadays, most companies feel Lean and Six Sigma complement each other, so they use a blended Lean Six Sigma approach. We put together an example using golf, since it's a sport most people are familiar with. When you tee off, there are certain requirements to have a good shot. To keep it simple, let's only focus on distance. There are two sand traps in this hole, one just past 150 yards and the other starting at 250 yards. As I tee off, I'm going to see where the ball lands between those two regions, and if I can keep it within 150 and 250 yards, then it would be considered a good shot, as I won't go into either sand trap and won't be penalized. On my first drive, I got 220 yards. I exceeded 150 yards, but didn't get too close to the 250 yards. The second drive was 200 yards, right in the middle of the range. The third drive was a little too far, out to 265 yards. Although it didn't go into the sand trap, it almost did, so I greatly increased my chance of a penalty. The goal of Six Sigma is to reduce the risk of running into a problem, which in this example occurs when you go above 250 yards or you are below 150 yards. The fourth drive was too short, only going 135 yards, which results in a penalty for going into the sand trap. The fifth drive was 170 yards, well below the 250 yard upper limit, but just barely past the 150 yard lower limit. The further away from the limits you are, the less risk there is of going past these limits. The goal is to consistently hit the target distance of 200 yards, which is the midpoint between the two limits, in order to reduce the chance of exceeding either limit. How do we assess how well we are doing at staying within the limits? Let's discuss the concept of sigma levels. Here is what a one sigma process would look like for a golfer. To determine the sigma level, we collect data on numerous tee shots, usually 30 or more, and we measure the variation of the shots by calculating a standard deviation. Then we compare the average and the standard deviation of the tee shot distance to the limits we have to achieve. As you can see, there is a lot of variation in the shots, and many of the shots are well above and below the limits, which means it will likely end up in the sand trap. 
The process is not very good, since there is a low probability that our tee shots will land within the limits. Therefore, we have a high probability that it will end up in a sand trap. A two sigma process is a little better, where 70% of the tee shots will likely end up inside the limits. You can see that the variation has been reduced, but we still have shots above and below the limits. A three sigma process shows even less variation, with a 93% chance of staying within the limits. We're not looking at the side to side variation in this example, but that could be another way of determining how well you will stay on the fairway, not just staying away from the sand traps. The 93% is based on a one and a half sigma shift over time, if you're already familiar with that concept. However, we won't go into that in this video. If you have a process at three sigma, that might be very good for your process based on your past results. As we improve our sigma level, we are continually reducing the chance of exceeding the limits. For your business, getting to two or three sigma might be a huge improvement. It all depends on the type of work, the volume of activity, and the industry you work in. Here is a four sigma process. We are getting even better with 99% of the tee shots falling within the limits, and the variation is much smaller. As we mentioned earlier, we should be striving to hit 200 yards with the least amount of variation. A five sigma process is now into the high 99% chance of success. We are starting to create a buffer between the process variation and our limits. This allows us to stay away from the limits and allow for other variables to come into the process and not push ourselves outside of the limits, such as wind or fatigue. And finally, here's the Six Sigma process, 99.9997% of the time where our tee shot distance is going to land between 150 and 250 yards over the long term. As you can see, variation is very tight and the shots are nowhere near either of the limits. If a company has many different processes, then we can determine the limits for quality and collect data on the process, then calculate the Sigma level. If each process is operating at Six Sigma performance, then there is very little probability that the processes will have a problem due to random variation, which will allow these processes to operate without rework loops, which saves the company money. If the process is performing at a sigma level much lower than where the company wants it to perform, based on the probability of success, then we need to evaluate ways to reduce the variation. In the golf example, to reduce variation in the tee shot distance, we would evaluate the golfer's technique, consistency of their backswing, type of club being selected, adjustments made for wind and weather, and any other factors that could cause the distance to vary. We could collect additional data on the golfer on future tee shots and perform ANOVA, a regression analysis, to assess which factors were impacting the variation the most. Or we could design an experiment to force the golfer to make adjustments and try different techniques to see which changes get the most consistent results. Hopefully this made the concept of Six Sigma a little easier to understand.